You may have heard people say that both genes and environments influence whether or not people develop a substance use or mental health disorder. But what does that really mean? Every one of us has a mental health jar. For a person to be experiencing an active episode of a mental health problem, their jar has to be full. This is true whether we're talking about alcohol problems, other drug problems, other mental health challenges like depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, or bipolar disorder. It's important to understand that even though these disorders are genetically influenced, we don't inherit the disorders themselves. What we inherit is a vulnerability to them. All of us are born with a certain amount of genetic vulnerability. There are probably thousands of genetic variants that exist that can increase risk. Most of them are so common in the population that all of us have some of them. There is no single gene for alcohol problems or drug problems or depression or any other complex mental health outcome. People who experience problems with mental health are not biologically defective or different from the rest of us. We all carry some genetic vulnerability. A few people have very little genetic vulnerability. A few people inherit a lot of genetic vulnerability, but most of us fall somewhere in the middle. Genes alone aren't enough to cause illness. We all start with some level of genetic vulnerability, and over time, we may accumulate environmental risk factors. What these risk factors are will be different for each person. They could include things like traumatic events, abuse, challenging family situations, divorce, or a romantic breakup or the death of a loved one. They are often what we call stressful or adverse life events, and they are unique to each of us. The only person who gets to determine if something is a stressful life event is you. You can start life with a lower genetic vulnerability, but still accumulate a lot of environmental risk, which could lead to your jar being full and experiencing problems. On the other hand, you could start with a high genetic vulnerability. Then it doesn't take as many stressful environmental events to lead to problems but you can also have a lot of genetic risk and not encounter many adverse environments. So your jar may never fill up and you may never experience problems. Understanding genetic and environmental risk can also help you understand how it's possible to reduce risk. By adding protective factors, it makes it possible for a person to experience more environmental risk without their jar becoming full, without actively experiencing problems. What are these magical protective factors? Many of them are things that are good for all of us. Sleep, nutrition, exercise, social support, finding more effective ways to manage stress. We may also be able to work to remove some of the environmental risk factors. In this way, regardless of your genetic vulnerability, you are not destined to be experiencing illness. And even if you have experienced problems, by adding protective factors and removing environmental risk, recovery is possible. Scientists are still in the process of finding the many genes that influence risk for substance use disorders and other psychiatric problems. As the science advances, we'll be able to do a better job of giving people an estimate of how much genetic vulnerability is in their jar. But even once we find all the genes, we will still never have a test that perfectly predicts who will develop problems because genes are always only a part of the story. Our experiences are the other part. This video was produced as a partnership between the Collaborative Study on the Genetics of Alcoholism, the Translational Psychiatric Genetics Group, and the Psychiatric Genetics Consortium.